Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel, and today we're going to be talking about the second raid here in Modern Warfare 2. This came out with Season 2 Reloaded, and if you guys recall, back when the first raid came out, I did kind of a review of it, and in there, I gave it a shining review. I thought that raids as a concept were such a fantastic feature. It took the idea of Spec Ops from the original Modern Warfare 2 and just turned it up to 11. I mean, the old Spec Ops were fun. You could even do them with your friends, but all you really had to go for were just stars, and that was pretty much it. I mean, it was something fun to do with your friends as kind of like a side thing. If you're kind of burnt out on multiplayer, maybe you're done with zombies for a little bit. Maybe you just want to go play some spec ops. It was something fun to do, but I feel so raids are the evolution of that. And honestly, I feel as though they're one of the best features to be added to COD in a very long time. So here in this video, we're going to be essentially doing what we did before, a kind of a breakdown, a review, if you will, of the second raid that we have here in Modern Warfare 2. Keep in mind, in total, there will be five raids. I believe they're going to come out pretty much every season season during that particular season's reloaded phase so season three reloaded we'll probably get another raid season four reloaded so on and so forth right so let's just go ahead and jump right onto this the second raid starts off right where the first raid left off where we end up finding a russian icbm keep in mind there will be spoilers here and we're still down here because we're trying to find our friend we couldn't find him in the first raid but we found this icbm and the objective for this raid is we're at the very bottom we need to get to the top right so we're immediately introduced to the new parkour mechanics of this raid alongside the teamwork puzzles that we've come to expect from the first episode, the very first raid. So after killing a few enemies, we're met with this giant wall, which we need to climb with scalding hot steam blocking our path forward. So how you beat this is one person climbs up while one person stays on the ground and turns on the valve, which allows the first person to get past the spicy water. And once that player is now at the very top, they can use a different valve to allow their teammates to get past the very first obstacle. Nothing too crazy but kind of just like sets the tone for what we can expect here with this particular raid. So after crawling a little bit, we're met with the second puzzle of the raid, which involves jumping in unison across ventilation latches. And we absolutely got this on our very first try. It was so simple. We definitely did not die a metric shit ton of times before we eventually realized that we need to be moving quickly in a single file line with one person being on a given latch at a a given time you would think this would be pretty simple to figure out but for some reason it just took us forever i don't know why but eventually we got past it and then we ascended upward to find that we needed to do the exact same thing again but this one was a little bit longer than the one before honestly this parkour challenge was a lot easier now that we knew what we were doing and afterwards we finally found some enemies to shoot at it kind of felt weird like at the very beginning we shot like a couple enemies but aside from that we were just like jumping around like it's mario or something like that it was kind of weird but after we killed those enemies this ended up leading us to a safe house where we could restock which also felt weird because we really didn't need ammo we didn't really need new guns or anything like that but all that ammo and our choice of weapons and things like that were very nice because of what was to come after this so so once we were all restocked up we headed to the next area and there were a number of enemies in here kind of blocking our way and i was pretty happy to have picked up the m14 because it just one shot most enemies in the head it was very easy to use though interestingly enough this area was quite similar to the first challenge that we had. If you recall, we had to climb up and have someone turn off the spicy water. Well, here we have to climb up and have somebody turn off the fire, pretty much. So to advance, one person needs to begin rappelling up right when another person turns a valve. This will get rid of the fire for a short period of time, which would otherwise kill their teammate. Now, at the very top of the rope, there are going to be a bunch of enemies. So make sure whoever's going up first has a bunch of armor and a bunch of ammo. But once they're up there, they can then help their teammates down below get up by using again another valve to turn off the fire once all three players are at the very top we go through some tunnels that are eerily reminiscent of an abandoned vault you might find in a game like fallout i've been playing a lot of fallout lately so that's maybe kind of on my mind but eventually we got to the final and arguably most difficult parkour challenge of this raid this one has us going clear across this giant death pit and then back again so it's similar to what we had before but it's definitely a lot longer and it leaves 
leaves a lot more room for error. I won't lie. I fell off a couple of times myself just because like the repetitive nature of it, which is kind of most parkour challenges. And remember, if one person falls off, you need all three people to actually be able to activate the latches to open in the first place. So if one person fails, everybody has to restart. And this can definitely be time consuming if one or two people keep messing up. And if you choose to play on veteran mode, one death is like all you get. So maybe nerves will get the best of players when it comes to this particular challenge. Once we made it across, we entered this area of the facility where we needed our flashlights. This was pretty basic. I mean, it's just limited visibility with normal enemies for the most part as we kind of just fight our way through. The one thing I will mention is that everyone I've talked to that have done this part of the raid say that if they play on PC, this looks absolutely terrible. I mean, my graphics look awful and maybe it's because of our shaders maybe it's because of some of the custom shadow settings that we have like i i don't know like maybe it's because i have my shadows turned down low that this looks so bad i mean it almost looks cell shaded to an extent so i'm wondering if this is like a me issue i'm curious to hear whether or not people that play on console have this same problem or if this is just simply like a pc graphical issue on our end but either way once we fought through a number of enemies we reached the final challenge of the raid i, I call it the final challenge there's more to it after this but this was like the final real challenge of the raid and in all honesty it's not even all that difficult like the super difficult part was just understanding what we had to do and when we had to do it and once we figured that out it was kind of easy but there's also the fact that your team does get split up and you're also on a time crunch and there are enemies trying to shoot at you every time you activate these different consoles so you need to do the puzzle correctly you have to do it relatively quickly all while not getting overwhelmed by enemy forces so it can be difficult but in reality like once you do it once like correctly I think you're going to figure it out and it's going to be easy in subsequent runs so the basic explanation of this puzzle is there is a door at the very end of the room which will lead you into this area that you can see through the windows that is filled with gas as well as electrified water there are three consoles or terminals wherever you want to call them that can be accessed one that vents the gas out of that room for a short time one that turns off the fans in that room for a short time and one that opens the door to even get into to the room again for a short time. So how you complete this puzzle is you have one teammate at the latch door, one teammate controlling the gas, and one teammate controlling the computer that opens the door. Working together, one teammate vents the gas out of the room while the other person opens the door for their teammate. That teammate then runs into the room where they need to try to avoid some shocky water that's on the ground. It's nothing too crazy. And then they get to the second room where they need to avoid water altogether. And then they call out to their teammates that they're about to hit the fans. This is when one of the teammates activates the fan control console, which will turn off one of the fans temporarily, and the fan that turns off is random, so be on your toes to figure out which one it is so you can jump through pretty quickly. The final room will have more shocky water on the ground, which will kill you way more on veteran, but since we're playing on normal, I was able to accidentally walk into it a couple of times and not die, but once you get close to the end, you're getting close to the door, you have to call out to your teammates and have them activate the door via the console, and then the first player is through. Keep in mind, while while that first player is running through those obstacles, the other players that are activating and controlling the consoles are also dealing with enemies that are coming at them, so it can be a little bit tricky, but again, it's not that hard once you have an idea of what you're doing and you have a little bit of coordination between your team. Now that one person has made it through here, the other two, of course, have to make it as well. The gas will keep coming in and the fans will keep turning on, so you could do this a number of ways. There are controls on the other side of the room where the first player made it through, which means technically they can use all the controls on their end and let the other two players run through together but that can be kind of tricky because the consoles themselves are kind of far apart the first player is also dealing with enemy forces so you can try to do it that way if you're trying to be very quick and very efficient but the safe bet is to have the person that made it to the other side the first player will call them help out with the controls on their end while one person runs through the room and the final person stays in the original control room to help out with the control panels whichever strategy you choose eventually all three of you will be through and you'll be in this next area from here we breach this wall and we appear to be chased by deadly gas after we do that meaning it's a race to the finish line we fight through tons of enemy forces while the gas is essentially chasing us which means you have to be quick and you have to be efficient until eventually we made it to an airlock at which point we have successfully completed episode two of the raid we are then met with a cutscene where we find the dude that we are looking for is alive and pretty healthy he's not even all beat up or nothing like that it seems like they probably 
probably would have messed him up a bit considering they killed all of his friends. But he gives us a message that the chick's brother, I think her name's Farah or Farah, something like that. Her brother is out of jail and is wanting to work with us to kill the Russians or something. I should really bone up on the lore of this stuff, given how much I like the gameplay and I like the teamwork. Like, I love these raids. I just I don't know what's happening. I can't name the characters, for example. Like, I don't know this guy's name. I think her name's Farah or Farah. Again, I, I mix it up based on the Overwatch character with a very similar name. So I'm sure somebody like Ink Slasher will have a full like lore video out there that I can watch so I can really have an idea of what's happening. Because I do believe that what happens in these raids is canon. Like all these events take place after the events of the Modern Warfare 2 campaign. And word is we were going to get some campaign DLC at some point, but maybe that's now scrapped because of COD 2023. I don't know. But regardless, that is what we learn right there. And then the raid is now complete on normal mode. And here are going to be the rewards. This is something that I feel so like Spec Ops back in the day never really had. We got stars. That was like pretty much it, right? Maybe some gamer score if you played on Xbox. What you get for doing this, just for simply beating the raid, even on normal difficulty, you get this Captain Price skin, which is actually pretty cool because this is the first Captain Price skin you can get in the game without spending money. The only way to get Captain Price otherwise previously was to have like the super duper deluxe edition of the game or whatever it was called. So if you're a fan of Captain Price, you can now actually play as him for completing this raid. And then you also get randomly one of seven rewards. See, these are like rewards that like drop from the raid, similar to how they would drop in a raid in a game like Destiny or a game like World of Warcraft. So what this does is it encourages you to go through and beat the raid seven times, essentially. This took us maybe an hour Hour, give or take our very first time through but I have no doubt that it would probably take us 15 20 minutes maybe 25 minutes on subsequent runs because we actually know what we're doing and one of the rewards is actually this really cool camouflage there's also a 74u variant that you get for apparently completing some sort of an easter egg so I may want to do that I don't know what the easter egg even is I'll probably have to look up a guide as to what I'm supposed to do but yeah you can get a 74u variant for doing an easter egg on this raid and if you beat the raid on veteran you get another weapon variant and as well so overall i just love these raids man they're so much fun to play with your friends i can understand like if you don't have an organized group of people that you may not find these to be all that fun because you can't just simply run through on your own you have to, you know, you're required to have two other people to even activate certain aspects of raid one and raid two so i can see that being an issue for some people but man it just it is so much fun to do this with friends it, it really is and the fact that there are tangible rewards like you get gas for completing the first raid you get price for doing the second raid there's weapon variants and there's special things you can unlock and that, that stuff's cool to me man the camo even looks fantastic again it, it drops randomly so you're going to beat the raid a bunch of times if you want to get all the content but that's again that harks back to the old school like almost like mmo co-op aspect of games like diablo world of warcraft and things like that so honestly i really like it like raids are fantastic in this game i think it's one of the better things they have implemented probably in the past decade if i'm being entirely honest like yes zombies is cool yes multiplayer is cool some people like warzone sure but uh for me like these are really cool like spec ops itself i'm not gonna lie i never really cared for like i did all like, i did every achievement back in the original modern warfare 2 which means i beat every spec ops mission i got three stars i did all that but what's that get for it really nothing besides like achievements and, and gamer score you know now they take the idea of spec ops and we do have those spec ops missions that are in the game which i don't think people really like that much but we also now have raids which just takes spec ops to a whole new level and maybe if you're a solo player that's looking for some like solo content this could be frustrating because you have to play with other people and you have to work with other people but I, I mean, that aside i just i, I enjoy these I, I really do and maybe in the future they will be updated so that maybe you know you could run through this with one person i don't know but you know having two other people in here with you is not the worst thing in the world it's pretty easy to find a group of people to play with and yeah i don't know it just it feels weird like i i have nothing but good things to say about the raid i feel like the one downside is if you don't have two friends to play with you may not enjoy the raid and therefore you may not like unlock the content that you can get here but, I mean, that's what it is. You know what I mean? Like, the only comparison I can think of is, like, I like COD multiplayer, and I really want to grind for Orion camo, but I don't have an internet connection. <laughs>
you know, it's like, well, you, you kind of need that to actually be able to access, you know, the online game, and you kind of need two other people to play with if you want to do the raids. You can do them with random people, and you can even communicate with pings, like um, Earthbound, uh, CZ, and Tails. They were in our Discord last night, and uh, a couple of them had to have their mics off for some reason, so they were able to communicate and beat the raid in about 20 minutes. They already beat it together before, so they knew what they were doing, but they were able to beat the raid just by communicating with pings, like in game without even using voice chat or anything like that so it's entirely possible for you to do that as well um again overall th this raid was freaking awesome i can't wait for the the third raid to come out with season three probably season three reloaded and yeah again kudos to infinity ward i have nothing but good things to say about this i would say this one seems a lot easier than the first one we'll have to see if that's uh, kind of a trend that we see continuing going forward but the season two raid pretty freaking awesome hope you guys all enjoyed this video leave your thoughts and feedback down there in the comments and i hope you guys all have a wonderful day.